Let's see. I guess I have to grant you audio too. <laughs> In theory, we are seeing your screen, but we're not seeing anything yet. Do you have permissions enabled in your browser? Well, whilst we're waiting for that, I'll just reiterate the call for volunteers for a JavaScript and image taker. Uh, we can always oh, just yeah. run the. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, oh, that's your coming in there. Good. All right. Do you have okay. audio too? In my presentation, I guess. I will, ah, okay. Should I open my slide in Chrome? Uh, I think when you, when you started sharing that, I think you were given the option of which application or which tab or uh, which uh, window you wanted to share or the screen, the whole screen. Okay, uh, now- When we come back to you in a minute, you can pick the right one and do it. Uh, Lord, Lord, can you see my PowerPoint screen? No. Yes, we see we see the uh, the PowerPoint in usual edit mode. You're not in you're not in presentation oh, mode. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Let's see. So who are the other who are the other two presenters we have uh, tonight today? Wojtek, um, who are the other me two? Me and Chongang, and I've already seen Chongang on the. Uh, participants list. Uh, given that time has already started and we will have some time in between presentations, perhaps we can just start with the chair slides uh, so they can start identifying uh, a minute taker and go through the administration parts. All right, let's do that. Cool, so let me just uh, share my slides. Mm -hmm. Right, so whilst we're going through the IRTF not well, uh, and IPR disclosure. Uh, I'm still looking for a minutes taker in JavaScript. Uh, the minutes are done through Etherpad, or they can actually even be done through uh, MeetEcho, it seems. Uh, and JavaScript just has to make sure we don't miss anything on the chat window. So if anybody wants to volunteer, either write on the chat, just write in the chat window. If not, we'll just have to uh, to uh, pick someone random here. We'll scroll through and click somebody's name at random. Uh, let's see. Robin Wilton offers to try and take minutes. Robin, thank you. Uh, as long as you just want actions, not a narrative. That's fine. Uh, Jennifer, uh, in that case, uh, Jennifer, you can still uh, monitor the Jabber chat and just uh, if, in case there are participants uh, who cannot, uh, well, you're trying to find Jabber. With the chat window you are actually talking in is connected to Jabber. Uh, I was confused this first as well, but that is Jabber, uh, the neat echo chat window. So yeah, in a face-to-face -face meeting, it would be a little bit different, but since this is all online, what you're doing is already jabbering. Well, so that actually is Jabber. It's, it's also just in the back end Jabber. So if you connect through Jabber, you're chatting there. Uh, OK. Uh, so in that case, uh, Jennifer, uh, if you could just monitor the chat. And basically, the idea is that, uh, as I said on the mailing list, uh, if somebody who cannot speak audio uh, for whatever reason uh, and then just write something on the chat window that you instead uh, pick up that and uh, media ask the question, relay the comment or question. Okay, so thank you, Robin, for volunteering. Uh, yeah, an actions not narrative is fine. Uh, we'll go through to the next slide then. 
do privacy and code of conduct. I'll leave it for a minute for people to scan through. By the way, these uh, sessions, as uh, as I see at the bottom of my window, and probably all of you all are seeing as well, this session is actually being recorded. Uh, yes, good point. Thank you, Rodney. And goals of the IRTF, just to reiterate that IRTF is not a standards development organization, and the difference between IRTF and IETF. So what do we call the uh, what do we call the the uh, the documents we are creating as as they get completed? We don't you know, the the uh, RFCs have multiple statuses anyway, so you have to be careful about call it, calling things uh, standards even if they're RFCs. Yeah, we're all, we write we when we do have RFCs, they are uh, they are not. Uh, on the standard track, there's standard track and there's a non-standard track, and that are the documents we will work on are on the non-standard track. Right. Uh, so they will be referred to not as a standard, but as a what? It's an informational in or it's called non-standard track, and they become informational or experimental drafts, as uh, Stuart pointed out yeah. in the chat. Okay. Yeah, I know uh, the statuses they have. I'm trying to figure out how you describe them to other people. Fair enough. A community document, I guess. Yeah. Uh, okay. So moving on to the actual uh, chair part of the slides. Uh, welcome everybody to the IETF 108 online quantum internet research group meeting. Uh, I'm happy to say see that we actually have about 70 participants. Uh, given that this is a paying event, I was uh, I was surprised to see more than we had on the free uh, previous virtual meeting. So that's uh, nice. Uh, moving on. So for the agenda for today, we'll go through some administrative. Uh, there will be then a talk by uh, Sato or Takahika, I don't know what uh, to refer to, about attacking the quantum internet. Uh, then we'll go through the two drafts uh, that we're currently working on. Uh, and we'll have a, we have quite a bit of time for the open floor discussion. And it'll be good if we actually could use that. We've got some uh, suggested topics, so we can go over them. Yes, we realized uh, as the, the interim we, meeting we held, how long ago was that now? Six weeks or so ago? We realized that, that we had failed to include a good open floor time. So this time we have plenty of time for that. So please take advantage of the time we have available. Uh, so one update, this is just informational. We have an updated charter as of 16th of May. Uh, it's mostly just a minor update. Uh, just to, as we are now a full research group. Uh, and more importantly, we had an IAB review uh, held on the 13th of May. So just before that, IAB stands for Internet Architecture Board. The goal of the review was for us to update the IAB as to what the research group was doing and our activities and how it's going. And also just to inform them what we're doing in terms of quantum, because it's not exactly obvious or well known, even in the uh, networking community, and for them to give us feedback. Uh, I'll, sum, I'll give my summary, and I'll then let Rodney add anything to that, uh, is that basically we'll keep doing what we're doing in terms of the documents, but we do have some challenges to answer in the way. Uh, two particular ones that I picked out is that, uh, as a group, we're kind of a mix of physicists and network experts. And it'd be great if we could actually use the research group to really build a community of quantum network experts. And also, we do have a lack of hands-on examples. Like It's all exciting, but very few of us actually have access to real hardware. So it'd be good if we started working on that somehow. Uh, so that's from me. Rodney, do you have anything to add? No, the biggest uh, feedback that we got from the IAB was, was that, that we need to continue to work to, to uh, bring the physicists, particularly the experimentalists, into the QIRG meetings and mailing list and, and uh, process. Um, and one of the ways that, that we had originally intended to do that when this group was founded was to have QIRG meetings not only in conjunction with IETF or IRTF, but also in conjunction with some of, some of the uh, physics meetings that some of us actually migrate around to. And obviously this year, that's not running on any sort of anything like a vaguely normal uh, um, uh, calendar. So 
as things calm down over the next uh, six, nine, 12 months, we'll, we'll hopefully schedule a, a QIRG meeting at an appropriate physics conference and try to bring additional people in through that as well. Cool, so that all sounds good. So without further ado, let's hand over to our first speaker. Uh, uh, are you ready to share your slides? I'll stop sharing mine. I'll also disable my camera. Did we lose connection? Let's see. I think he's reconnecting. He's in the uh, participants list there, All right? It's asked to send audio. The new screen has been shared. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, now I can hear you. Yeah, hi. We still don't see your screen, though. Mm -hmm. uh, can, no. can you see my slide now? I see no. the screen. Are you sure you're in the presentation, mm -hmm. mode, Rodney? Presentation view. Yes. OK, let's yeah. get start. started. OK. Uh, I'm from K University. And today I will talk about our new paper, Attacking the Quantum Internet. OK. OK, first, uh, I show the outline of today's talk. And today I will talk about these two topics. First one is how can attacker, can, sorry, uh, how can attackers attack elements of the quantum internet? And second one is if attacker successfully hijack full control of quantum nodes, what he can do, he or she can do, okay? Um, yeah, it's abstract model of quantum internet. Yeah, this cloud is from internet. And there are four user nodes. Uh, left two nodes is uh, a, a M node. And this one denotes classical computer with very small me measurement device, okay? Uh, we call this uh, M, M node. And these are uh, end node quantum computer or server. Yeah, we call this uh, e, e, e node. Okay. And next, oh, sorry. Okay. And these are three typical application of quantum internet. The first one. If we have, uh, yeah, if there are many M nodes, th these are connected to quantum internet, yeah, and we can perform fast Byzantine agreement algorithm. Yeah, it's very useful. We, we believe so. And uh, the second one is blind quantum computation. It's combination of M node and E node application. Okay, and uh, Third one is distributed quantum computation. It's combination of uh, many enos, quantum computer and quantum servers. Okay, and these are typical and famous application. And uh, I wanna use uh, th th this application, but uh, these are not today's main topics. Okay, it's only example and yeah, example of application and quantum nodes. Okay, and today I will talk about architecture and system of quantum internet. To do so, we need to add more three quantum nodes, X node and I node and R, R node. Okay, in this picture, only I node and M node are not quantum repeater. Okay, of course, M node is classical, classical computer and, and uh, intermediate node, yeah. I node is only photonic device, bell state analyzer or um, 
sorry, entanglement photon pair sources. So inode is device to create or connect better pairs between R nodes or X nodes. And R nodes are installed, uh, R nodes, they're not repeater. This is name of, sorry, uh, this is not quantum repeater. Yeah, and, uh, it's classified name of, uh, sorry, uh, it's, it's classification of quantum nodes. And repeater are installed at fixed distances to improve network performance like this. Yeah. So, and it, this X node is very important device. It's responsible for branching the root of Q, 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 quantum internet. So, as you can see, X node has so many external quantum channels, and R node has only two external quantum channels, okay? And it, when we manage quantum internet, we need to focus these four crucial points, topology, routing, tomography, and the presence of malicious actors. But first two topics are out of scope of our paper. So we today we focus to these tomography and the presence of malicious actors. Yeah. And in, no, sorry, to discuss these two topics, we need to introduce one scheme, quantum state tomography. Quantum state tomography is very useful scheme. Yeah. If we have so many copied quantum state uh, la, la, like this, there are so many copied better states. Yeah. We can estimate and re reconstruct the state, uh, the, the state by using tomo quantum state tomography. And we can reconstruct the state, uh, we, sorry, we, uh, we can re reconstruct and estimate the quantum state. But uh, of course we can't know actual given quantum state. And, but, and yeah, it, it's very useful to monitor the status of quantum leak, okay? And quantum state tomography has one more very useful function, okay? And by using Sorry, and by using quantum state tomography, we can monitor the opt. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I explained first one, and uh, second one is also important. We can detect the log quantum manipulation, like this, uh, creating illegal entanglement by attacker, like this, yeah. and. Uh, Illegal modification to qubit like this, okay? And because quantum state tomography, ah, sorry, and, mm, okay, and let's get continued. Yeah, and first, and, I will discuss about the primitive attack on elements of quantum nodes. Okay, and in this topic, mm, we, we, we will analyze yeah, how, how to attack quantum, quantum internet. Okay, and to discuss that topic, now we introduce two cl classification planes, classical plane and quantum plane. And okay, these two figures are internal structures of quantum node. Here we show only measurement node, M node and X node, okay? And this red zone denote quantum plane 
yeah. eh, to, bo, bo, both of these led the zone. Yeah. Quantum plane includes qubit, of course, qubit, detector, and quantum channel, and optical switch, and other quantum devices. Okay. And in classical plane, there exist classical controller and scenic and classical channels. Yeah. Eh, to, all of these are classical devices for co communication. And of course, all quantum nodes are connected to classical internet and quantum internet. OK? Um, and to analyze the security of Q nodes, yeah, we introduced CIA security models, and we checked all elements in first. In. Uh, so if you want to know the detail of these analysis, uh, please check our paper, OK? And uh, in the context, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, it is very important topic. Uh, of course, all, uh, all, almost all of us know the no cloning theorem. And this theorem forbid us to copy the qubit. So uh, from this reason, yeah, uh, pro proper tomography keep confidentiality, uh, confidentiality of quantum plane, uh, especially uh, qubit state. But uh, Integrity and availability are very similar to classical network systems. Yeah. Cool. And the quantum plane of Q node, these are not much different from attack on classical internet devices. Okay, so it uh, oh, oh, uh, DOS and DDoS and uh, as a classical attacking scheme is effective to attack classical plane, okay? And uh, yeah, uh, and no cloning theorem uh, protect the confidentiality of quantum plane, but if we can perform composite attack of co classical plane and quantum plane. Yeah. We can violate the confidentiality of quantum plane. It's one a simple example. If we can, you know, uh, if we success to store the qubit, and yeah, uh, sorry, in this case, qubit denote half, half of bell pair and we success the classical channel information. Uh, so, sorry, we success to eavesdrop the information of classical channel. In this setting, we can reconstruct uh, te te teleported qubit information. So we can say, uh, in this case, the bi uh, confidentiality of quantum plane is violated by using composite data. Okay, it's very critical situation. And next, I will talk. Uh, what can we do by using hijacked quantum node? Yeah, uh, in this context, we are attacker. Uh, uh, we, we are attacker and hijacker to quantum internet. Uh, and this is framing innocent Q nodes attack. Yeah. In this paper, we in introduced the detail of this attack. In this setting, yeah, we success we success to hijack the uh, X, X node in quantum internet like this, and Marisha. Um, um, Malicious router can frame other repeaters or router by subverting tomography information. It's fake report. Yeah. If this hijacked node say 
this node is broken, or this one is hijacked. And if uh, he success to uh, sorry uh, success to believe this information to uh, 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 entire quantum internet, this this node will be isolated and prompt very uh, sorry and if. Uh, th th this um, so many I I, I sorry this sorry 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 and when this hijack node success to isolate so many x nodes like this yeah this network is partitioned by you know, fake report. Sato, if you don't finish up uh, quickly, we'll we'll be out of time for questions. We've only oh, got about okay. four minutes left. Okay. Okay. Uh, us. Okay. Uh, please check this paper to know the detail of this attack. Okay. So okay, I passed this one. Yeah. And if we success to hijack multiple quantum nodes, yeah, we can perform more powerful attack attacking scheme, quantum DDoS, and uh, framing um, more, more fast. Framing and uh, isolated attack. Okay. Uh, it's summary of uh, my talk. In our paper, we provided the first attempt to summarize the safety of quantum repeater architecture. Okay, uh, it's based on classical system taxonomies. And Quantum state tomography is a key technology for detecting, detecting the presence of attacker. And yeah, uh, confidentiality is difficult to violate by only quantum plane attacking. But integrity and availability are similar to classical network scheme. And yeah, uh, this work represents only the first step in assessing the security of quantum network. So we need to focus and continue the research about quantum internet security. Oh, okay. Uh, All right, so, so we have about uh, two or two and a half minutes for, for questions, and then we can come back more to it. To, to the topic in the open uh, mic session at the end. Uh, anyone with a uh, question here at the moment? If you want to ask a question, you might want to click the raise hand button or ask for audio. We do have one question here in the uh, chat window or in, in the jabber um exactly. isn't the problem how to prevent eavesdropping on classical channels a uh, solved problem uh, i think it's sort of a comment in terms of of the focus uh i cannot find it is the last comment in the jabber scott wrote it Mm. If you scroll down the chat on the left, oh, okay. Scroll down. You have to scroll down because the history is at the bottom. Last one. Um, it's up to classical security technology. I, mm -hmm. I, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Eavesdropping on classical channels is a scope of our research in this paper. Okay, other questions? Anything else? Sing in the chat. We have uh -huh. another one from the chat. How yeah. to identify hijacked node 
it seems that the attack strategy heavily depends on that. Yes, and actually after uh, sorry, um, it's very good question and it yeah it, to I, I I identify hijacked node, we use ra randomly timing uh, quantum state tomography and. Oh, that was weird. I think we just lost Sato. <laughs> uh, should we let him answer so. that chat and just move on then? Because his time is up. Yeah. All right, uh, answer that in the chat and then we'll move on and we, and we can come back to this uh, during the uh, Q&A if necessary. Uh, so next up is Chong Gang with the uh, principles. I have enabled your screen share now. Yes. Yep. Can you see my screen? They hear me well? Yep, we can. And I see your screen. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. Uh, I would like to uh, share with you on our progress and our updates to this uh, application use case uh, draft for the quantum internet. Um, maybe background on slide two. Uh, so the uh, version zero uh, actually was uploaded uh, back in May uh, as a research group document. Uh, and uh, actually during that time, uh, we uh, we got a few pending comments. Um, two major ones, uh, as you can see, this here. The first one is need to uh, clari clarify the control and the data plan classification. So in the version zero section four, we we have um, several classification um, uh, criteria to classify, um, you know, the quantum internet applications. And one of the criteria is based on control and data plan. So we need to add a little bit more clarification. Um, second comment is a uh, uh, kind of in line with the recharter and also mentioned by uh, Wojek. We need to map the described use case in this document uh, to Dr. Uh, Wenner's uh, quantum internet roadmap. So based on those two uh, major uh, pending comments uh, in the version. Um, Zero one, that's the current version. Uh, we incorporate um, some updates. Uh, based, uh, specifically in section 4.3, uh, we added clarifications on control and data plan classification. Uh, section 6, it is about the requirements. So in that section, we added an, an, you know, a couple of paragraphs and a table to map the described use cases to the quantum internet roadmap. Uh, as you know, that roadmap includes like six uh, stages or phases. Uh, so that's kind of quick background uh, about the current version and zero one. So the first the major update uh, we did is to the section 4.3, the clarification on control and the data plan classification. So we basically added a, a table, uh, as you can see here, um, we we are trying to you know classify the potential quantum internet applications from control plan and data plan perspectives and also trying to compare those applications either in classic internet in quantum network or in quantum internet so if we look at the second row which is about the control plan as we know in Current classical internet, we have SMP, uh, DNS, those are kind of typical well known uh, control plan uh, application or signaling um, protocols. Uh, and then we look at the quantum network. So, what will be the control plan application for the quantum network? So, we were thinking, for example, uh, when we in the, in the uh, quantum network, uh, the major task is to uh, do the uh, in entanglement distribution. For doing that, we kind of need some signaling protocol, which is 
which is based on you know classic uh, data paths. But here, when we talk about the quantum network, really the control plan is more like the signaling for controlling uh, entanglement distribution, and the correspond in, in and then in contrast, the data plan for the quantum network will be the entanglement distribution because that's the major task for the quantum network to achieve to accomplish. Uh, and then we can when we extend the quantum network to the quantum internet, kind of the integration of the quantum network and the classic internet. So the control plan application, uh, you know, three four one is a QKD quantum K distribution based a secure communication setup. That would be the control plan, um, either protocol or application, in order to enable the data plan quantum internet application. For example, video conference in the future, uh, you know, could be securely enhanced based on QKD. Uh, so we, we we kind of do this um, uh, classification, and we we thought this uh, we help. Uh, the audience and people to understand the quantum internet applications uh, uh, better. And uh, 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 in addition, uh, the quantum internet, I forgot to mention, the control plan application for quantum internet, another one is a quantum pin. Uh, we actually, we got this feedback uh, comment from the many uh, as, as I believe from the Patrick. So we also added this quantum pin. Um, as a control plan application example, uh, which basically uh, can, you know, find if the two quantum nodes, if there is a quantum collection or entanglement collection being established end to end between those two quantum nodes or not. That's kind of equivalent to classical pin for the classical internet. Um, so this this is a kind of classification we 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 updated we added to the uh, version um, in the current version zero one. Um, the next update uh, is to the section six. As I mentioned, section six is dedicated to the requirements. So we describe the applications in section four, and then we describe um, use cases with more details in section five. And section six, we we were trying to come up with and describe the potential requirements. And in this map process, we thought it might be a good place in section six. But it's, you know, if if people are, you know, the co-RG, if we think uh, we need to have this map in a separate section or in some other places, um, we are we were happy to uh, make make changes. But currently, we put this uh, mapping table. Uh, in section six, trying to see for different uh, stages, uh, we have corresponding use cases and and also what's the requirements from the functional nodes, not from the the data performance requirements. So just trying to describe this slide quickly. Um, as we know, the data uh, winners paper published in uh, I forgot in Science or Nature. Uh, it's a great paper. Um, she described the six stages of quantum internet, as you can see. Uh, stage one, trusted repeater networks. Uh, and then stage two, prepare and major networks. Next stage three, based on entanglement distribution, uh, using repeaters, for example. Uh, stage four is about the quantum memory networks, which requires uh, you know, more quantum memory. And the quantum nodes. Uh, section five and six is about the four tolerant for your qubit networks and the quantum computing networks, uh, respectively. So I think the ultimate goal is to enable fully distributed, uh, full fledged, uh, you know, quantum internet, quantum networks. Uh, that's that's a, uh, stage six. Uh, and then what we did. Um, is we, as I mentioned in section five, we have described three major uh, quantum internet applications in current current document. The first one is a secure communication setup. The second one is a secure quantum computing. The third one is distributed quantum computing. So for the QKD, in order to uh, you know facilitate this mapping, we kind of describe the QKD or 
classified CoKD into three different types. The first type of CoKD we call the secure communication setup with basic CoKD, which means um, the, you you only able to provide the basic CoKD between two directly collected quantum nodes. If you want to extend uh, this CoKD from two directly collected nodes to end to end, you need to use the trusted node. That's kind of mapped to stage one. Uh, stage two. Um, we still use a CoKD, but in this time, um, you know, we have the long distance um, cold bit transmission uh, feasible. It, it is possible and becomes feasible. So in this case, the CoKD is kind of end to end without relying on any trusted intermediate nodes. That's what we call the stage two. And stage three, still you kind of maintain the end-to-end -end CoKD without uh, using the trusted nodes, but you you kind of use the integrated uh, qubits based on leverage the entanglement distribution to enable this advanced end-to-end -end CoKD. So we we kind of map the CoKD to stages one, two, three, uh, respectively, uh, with a kind of additional features uh, for each stage. <clears throat> And then for the stage four, uh, secure and blind. Um, for stage four is the quantum memory networks, uh, which means in that stage, quantum memory is required or becomes available. So we can enable secure or blind quantum computing. Uh, next stage five, um, you know, focus or um, emphasize is more on fault tolerance. So the use case will be higher accuracy clock synchronization. Uh, one point, one thing I need to point here is for stage five, that use case higher accuracy clock synchronization currently not described with details in, in this document yet. Um, I, I think based on feedback from the team here, uh, we can add more details in the next version. Uh, for this stage five use case, higher accuracy clock synchronization. The last stage, uh, quantum computing networks, um, which means uh, the physical devices and the we technology um, advanced and we were able to support more qubits uh, and then we are able to enable the distributed quantum computing. That's the uh, third use case that we described. Uh, in this document can map to this stage six, the last stage. As you can see on the um, on the rightmost column uh, for each stage and the corresponding use cases, uh, we kind of describe the, I call this more like the functional requirements. For example, stage one, you, you are going to need the trusted nodes. Stage two, uh, you need to have the non-distance, could be the transmission, um, you know, taking place. Stage three, uh, we have the entanglement distribution. Stage four, quantum memory will be needed, required. Um, yeah, that's kind of the functional requirements. So we did this for the uh, section six. Um, that's kind of the two um, major updates um, we, we have incorporated to this uh, version zero one. Um, moving forward for the next steps, um, I think back in uh, early this year, uh, we got a question and a feedback from uh, Masas about the general requirements, especially on the performance indicator. Uh, for example, like the quantum error rate will be in which range for which quantum internet applications. Uh, currently, um, we have kind of challenges to identify um this kind of performance uh, indicator um with a reasonable uh reasonable uh description so we welcome and invite inputs from the team if anyone has any idea about this um whether and how we can describe the you know little bit of quantitative performance indicator for the and the part of the requirements uh, we appreciate that. We we uh, welcome uh, invite inputs. Uh, also, 
in the mailing list, uh, we'll, we would like to continue to um, have more discuss and then get more feedback uh, and then improve, uh, continue to improve uh, this use case uh, document. <clears throat> So, John, uh, guys, we, we need to um, we need to wind up so, so that we have time for some Q and A. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, this is actually the last slide. <laughs> uh, I will take like maybe twenty two uh, three seconds uh, again to conclude the, uh, my presentation. Uh, the last question I'm um, trying to um, ask the research group here is: I saw there are some um, if the use case draft uh, could be uh, sh or should be synchronized. Uh, with the uh, principal uh, documents in terms of the uh, research group last call, uh, because we saw something similar to this uh, being done uh, in other uh, working group or research groups uh, for uh, you know related drafts. So that concludes my uh, presentation today. Um, I, I welcome any feedback or questions. Thank you. So the uh, Wojtek and I were talking uh, in, in the background, and we're going to let this run until the top of the hour. So four minutes for Q&A, and then anything else uh, can go to the uh, open mic session. Questions? If nobody else has one, I do, actually. Mm -hmm. um, speaking as an individual, the, uh, I think one of the things that this could be valuable for in the community as a whole is not just um, listing the applications, but, but trying to establish what the performance requirements for them are likely to be. I have this vague recollection that we talked about this when this project was getting off the ground, but I don't re remember for certain. Uh, so hello? You know, how many uh, bits per second you need for QKD or for or for whatever? No, uh, we we actually uh, we were trying to uh, you know survey and um, read the uh, literature's uh, published articles, trying to find any uh, specific performance indicators. But we, we we do have some challenges here. Um, that's why I'm trying to ask and I welcome input and feedback and also Ronnie and also people uh, on the meet, uh, on the call. If you know there are any related relevant references, um, please uh, let us know, and then we are, we are going to incorporate. We can add anything based on what we uh, we are going to read. Okay, I think we have questions from Joey and from uh, Diego. Was it? I get only a brief message here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joey was first, so you may want to let him go first. There we are. Yes, Joey. Okay, excellent. So just wondering, like, outside of performance, what other things are being considered for these use cases? Or is it still, like, too early to think of other things, like um, uh, anonymization of users uh, and, and, and privacy of their data, for example? Mm -hmm. So you mean, like, the data privacy issue? Sorry? So you mean the data privacy issue, right, from a user perspective? Yeah, more or less like um, uh, performance was mentioned, right, uh, if it was yeah. going to be considered in the use cases. So first I'm wondering, like, what other things are going to be considered in these use cases and if it's still too early to think about uh, the privacy of the users and uh, anonymity of the data and things like that. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't okay, know how to deactivate my microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, a quick, uh, quick uh, response. I will take a look at uh, um, this data privacy. Uh, but currently, what we did for each use case is we, we, uh, we are trying to describe the functionality and the architecture uh, for each use case. And then, um, you know, for this requirement, currently, we, we kind of describe the functional requirement, see which, which type of nodes and, uh, either, uh, and also which kind of collection channels uh, we're going to need in order to support a particular use case. Uh, but for the data privacy, uh, not much yet been described. We'll take a look. Yeah. Uh, Diego, I think you have audio already. 
don't hear anything. I think Diego must request audio separately. Yeah, there you go. Hang on, let's see. Yeah, should be now. It was only the there video included the audio. Sorry. Uh, no, it's a, it's a, well, well, one thing is a, is a line with what Joey was asking for. It's precisely other considerations. Probably, um, I mean, uh, privacy and is a, is quite important. I would say that manageability and how this can be integrated with uh, operations is something essential as well. And I don't know how to call it op operationalization or something like that. So it can it can be part of uh, uh, of the normal of all normal or future network management uh, procedures. The other aspect is, uh, is that looking at the uh, at the documents and the cases you discussed, you discussed in in in, in them uh, in it is something that this is more oriented towards. I would say classical applications that can take advantage of uh, of the quantum internet, right? Is uh, because you, you look at the enhanced video conferencing or, or, or pinging on things. That we are we are not talking yet, or we are not uh, touching the idea of having pure quantum um, quantum applications, whatever they are, right? Uh, I don't know if you have this in mind, or is something that I have overlooked, or. Uh, and Diogo, thank you. Yeah, for the first comment related to the uh, management, management perspective, I think that's a good angle. Uh, we'll, we'll try to end uh, some discussion details there uh, to enable the future quantum network management, as you mentioned. The second question from you is about the, uh, so you were saying, yes, the first application, like a secure com uh, communication setup, that's kind of the existing application to be enhanced by leverage TOKD. But the third one, the second one, the uh, secure um, compute quantum computing, and the third one, distributed quantum computing, we thought both are kind of a new applications uh, not being supported by in current uh, classical internet. Mm. Is, there any, is there any application in your mind you want us to cover or? A pure well, no, uh, no. I, I, I was, I was precisely uh, thinking on, on, on basically uh, how the uh, uh, the transmission of a quantum state could look at the other side, and how this could translate into into I don't know some kind of uh, distributed quantum com uh, computation, things like uh, things like that. We are, we are right now, which is something I, I fully. I, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm against it. It's just uh, <laughs> probably is going a little bit beyond. In the in the analysis of the use cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the uh, there's actually one more question in the, or actually now two more questions in the uh, jabber. But since we're already several minutes over time, I'd actually like to move on to the next presentation by Wojtek, and we can either cover these in the chat window or come back to Q and A for for the last uh, 25 minutes or so of the session. Okay, let me just share my slides. Uh, cool. And Looks good. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, so thanks. Uh, I will be talking about the draft that's been going on for over a year now, and hopefully we're nearing the end. Uh, so right. For a recap first, uh, the first version of the draft was prepared and presented at the 104 meeting in Prague in March of 19. Uh, the main motivation behind me proposing this uh, draft was that we do have a point in the charter which says that an architect that we, one of the possible goals for the group was that we'll produce an architectural framework delineating network node roles and definitions to build a common vocabulary and serve as the first step toward a quantum network architecture. Uh, and also uh, an intention of this document was to create a good starting point for people uh, who have no quantum background. Uh, because being in the IRTF and close to the IETF means there's a lot of those people. Uh, and we do want to make this uh, subject very accessible. Uh, the draft was adopted at that meeting, and the discussions continued. Uh, we had four web calls to cover sections one to five of the document uh, towards the end of before the, uh, the Singapore IETF in 2019, 
we had one web call in June this year uh, to cover Section 6. Uh, and I presented updates at the IETF meetings 106 and 107. Uh, there was a lot of feedback. Uh, the entire document has basically been reworked, uh, not from scratch. The structure is still roughly the same, but uh, a lot of feedback and work has gone into it. It's, I'd say, more comprehensive and accessible now and representative of the wider community, or at least that's the hope. Uh, the current version is maintained on GitHub. Uh, so if you want to see the most up-to-date version, uh, do look there. I usually always paste a link when I update it. Uh, I only update the data tracker version before the IETF meetings. Uh, as the GitHub is just more convenient. Overview of changes since uh, we last met. We have one new author, Shota. Thank you very much. Uh, his contribution was that uh, we now have a completely reworked and effectively gone from something very small to actually a more significant section in the draft, an error management section. Uh, which discusses what are called quantum repeater generations. I will go over and briefly introduce the concept. And Shota also introduced a comparison between what he called and what we call, I get, can call store and swap versus store and forward. Where the idea is that the store and forward is the, how packets are forward in the classical internet, where you receive a packet on one interface, you store it, and then you forward it out of another interface. Where they're in a quantum network, what you do is you kind of you receive your entangled pairs on two links, you store the qubits uh, inside, and you swap them. There's no forwarding after that. So you basically, you kind of receive on both interfaces rather than receiving and sending. Uh, there's different, I guess, logical and conceptual ways of seeing it. Uh, other than Shoto's contributions, I've reworked section six based on the feedback from the call we had in June. Uh, incorporated a bunch of other feedback from the mailing list, uh, mostly rods. Uh, and there were also several other edits for readability and consistency. Uh, because after all these edits, uh, I just went through and made sure that it's fairly self-consistent. So section six, which I've already alluded to, is the goals and principles section. It's kind of what the draft builds up to. And we discussed on the web call uh, at the beginning of June. Uh, we kind of, in summary, after the web call, the impression was that the goals really align with a lot of the goals of the classical network, but the considerations are very often very different. So the section is now written with an angle that really emphasizes that uh, point. And if there isn't anything new to say about the quantum stuff, then it's just not said. Uh, and there's a, there's a bit on security over there. Uh, I'm no expert on security, either classical or quantum. Uh, so currently, the version was uh, written together with uh, Stephanie, who is an expert on security. Uh, but uh, as it stands, it may need some wordsmithing or clarifications uh, or citations. Uh, if you do have a chance, do have a look and review and provide some feedback. Uh, error management, so discussed significantly reworked thanks to Shutter PR. Uh, pull request for those uh, don't use GitHub. Uh, and it's basically a summary of the error management is that there are three generations of error management. Uh, and it's an important clarification because I know I was confused is that generations are kind of more like categories, uh, although later generations do require better hardware. Uh, so uh, it's just the point is they one doesn't necessarily obsolete each other, and you may want to use different generations depending on what hardware you actually have on hand. Roughly what the difference is between 1G, 2G, and 3G is how do they treat loss tolerance? Uh, how do they achieve loss tolerance, and how do they achieve error tolerance? Uh, this is just transcribed. Uh, I believe this is a table that was originally in a paper and should have just transcribed into the draft. Uh, loss tolerance is basically how do we tolerate losing qubits on the fiber when we transmit them. And error tolerance is how do we tolerate state errors. So once you already actually have your entangled pair, how do you account for the fact that there may errors may have crept in and your fidelity is not perfect? So in the first generation, uh, the tools used basically require a lot of classical communication to tolerate these losses. I'm not going to go into the details. The details are described in uh, the draft. But basically, the trend is as you go to higher generations and you have better hardware, so 
uh, so more qubits and uh, better fidelities to start with, you go towards quantum error correction, which lets you reduce the amount of classical signaling uh, that's being used and hopefully reduce the latency of communication. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, Chotel also wrote about store and swap versus store and forward. Uh, it's a key difference, kind of, between classical, kind of, it is a key difference between how classical and quantum networks will work, especially the early ones. Uh, and note that three, the 3G quantum networks, the ones that use, that use full quantum error correction, uh, are able to actually store and forward. But an important issue raised in the mailing list is just because they can, doesn't mean they have to. They can still do store and swap. Uh, it's up to the network designer architect to decide how they want to use uh, the 3G quantum networks. They might require different protocols if you decide to do store and forward instead of store and swap. Uh, that's something I don't go into the draft, and it's probably best left out. I, I kind of want to limit it to, well, this is what 3G lets you do, uh, rather than what we should, what we should do with it. Uh, other changes, uh, I incorporated a, a bunch of feedback uh, from what I'm not going to go into the details, they're just kind of all over the place, but the details are in the mailing list. Uh, and as I already said, minor fixes to enhance uh, readability and self-consistency of the document. There was one point raised on the mailing list uh, after the June call. Uh, it's about discrete continuous variable encoding. So a brief summary of what that means for those uh, who have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, it's basically how do you encode qubits on the fiber, generally in hardware. Uh, discrete means that you use something like polarization, which is vertical or horizontal, or time bit, or use time bins to encode your qubit being in the zero or one state, which the properties of this are that they're higher fidelity, but they have probability, they're probabilistic in terms of whether they succeed or not or use some continuous thing like a field or quadrature of light, which have lower fidelity, but are deterministic. Uh, current status, that's my opinion as uh, an editor of this draft. I think that this is effectively already included by mentioning there will be various hardware architectures. And because I don't go into the details of what the hardware architectures might be, uh, I don't think uh, I'll be including this in the draft. Uh, but I mentioned brought this in just to make it clear. And if somebody has another opinion on this, uh, I'm happy to hear it. Um, and looking forward, uh, so kind of this is uh, hopefully the last stretch before uh, actually moving up from an internet draft to an ROC. Uh, a big point that has been sticking out for a few months now is that uh, it needs more references to academic. Uh, to academic papers just for completeness uh, and being able to refer the readers to uh, proper academic literature. Uh, that's still a to-do for me. And the few open questions uh, with Rod that are still uh, need to be just closed up are, we mentioned shortest path uh, in one or two sections. It should be defined more carefully what it means because there are some additional considerations in quantum networks. Uh, the terms control plane and data plane are kind of thrown around in a few places in the draft, but they're not defined. Uh, there's a question about time skewed entangled pairs, which is that you can start operations on your entangled pairs before they actually are end to end entangled pairs. Uh, I personally, I don't think I should go into the detail of that, but that's still up for discussion as to to what extent that's included. Uh, and review whether all optical uh, quantum repeaters and network architectures are excluded by the language. Uh, I leave that for the mailing list unless somebody wants to bring that up. And in my opinion, once these two points are wrapped up, uh, the document's ready. Um, so with that, uh, I'm done and I'm open to questions, feedback, uh, etc. My audio back on, don't I? Yes. Um, questions, comments, either in the chat window or from the floor. Since we are getting close to close to the end with this, if you have serious objections or even small comments, now's the time. Yes, Jerry. Uh, 
Um, just a quick question around the, the network protocols. So you pick out OSPF and ISIS, they're, they're IGPs, but you've no mention of an EGP or the considerations of an EGP, um, yet it's going to be building an internet. Uh, yes, uh, very good point. Uh, we haven't actually put much thought into going beyond intra-domain routing. Uh, I think there was actually somebody mentioned it should be at least mentioned that this is a concern, and I think I do mention it in the draft. And if I don't, then that's a mistake. Uh, yeah, I think I may have accidentally removed it. Oh dear. Okay. So, so yes, oh, good point. I should re-add the fact that intra-domain routing is going to be a concern, but we have no answers for that yet. Okay. Are you looking for answers for that? Uh, they're welcome. Uh, perhaps maybe not in this draft, but as a separate unit of work. Uh, that's definitely something that uh, I am not aware of anybody thinking about, uh, mostly because intra-domain is still such a uh, open question, and a lot of people are working on it, and literature is kind of slowly growing on it. But yes, interdomain will have to be answered, and contributions are welcome. Okay, thank you. Other questions from the floor? If not, I will actually toss in one. Uh, let's see, we do have a question here. Let's see. It's not a question, oh, no. it's just a comment. <laughs> Yes, please. Who, who's uh, speaking? It no, was me. I just mentioned that it's just that it's not a question; it's just a comment on something. It's me like... isn't particularly helpful for the recording. <laughs> oh, oh Jennifer! Afraid. Jennifer! Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Did, so, did you want did you want to uh, read something into the record or ask a question? No, no, no. That was just a note that somebody that it was just a comment on the chat, not a question. Jennifer is the JavaScript. Okay. Um, I will say that we have actually thought about in interdomain intradomain versus interdomain, IGP versus EGP routing with a different architecture that we call the recursive quantum network architecture. Um, derived from some work with uh, Joe Touch, whom you might know. So it would be multi-layer rather than just two-layer IGP, EGP. I'll post a link. Other comments or questions from the floor? On the, uh, let's see. Architectural principles for a quantum internet draft, which currently sits at the dash 04 draft and we're hoping to finish up and uh, push toward rfc soonish all right wojtek i'll comment uh, the uh, your last your your um, let's see one slide back on uh, the uh, different physical implementations um, I agree with you. I think that's probably lower level than needs to go into the uh, document. Um, maybe a reference to where people can learn about the physical encodings might be worthwhile, but I don't think we need to, to go through it in the document itself. That's my opinion. Fair point. I'll keep that in mind when adding references. Everybody else is happy with this, and so we can we can publish this as an RFC. Oh, you know, tomorrow noon. All right, I'll toss in one more additional comment. I was just skimming through the document for there. There are a number of places in it where where I have managed to get in and in, in the over the course of some of the editing um, discussion of error detection as opposed to error correction. But in the in the the uh, section where distillation and purification is described, that's not connected to the error detection. And I think we should do that. Okay. 
and installation plus QC. I personally think of error. I personally think of quantum purification as error detection. That's the way I think of it. Okay, well, we'll work on that on the mailing list. Good point. Other questions? If not, uh, oh wait, let's see something in the in the uh, somebody here. I, I was on the nope. queue, uh, Rob. But yes, uh, who is that? Diego. Yeah, does it? Yes, Diego. Question. As well. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, regarding your the mention to the error correction uh, and detection. I mean, I'm not sure in all cases that in QKD this is very much used, but. Uh, it, it's very much applied by means of a classical channel, a parallel classical channel, right? And this is some kind of uh, touch point with the with the with the classical network that probably probably should be. Uh, but that's, there may be other cases in the case of things like co-propagation, for example, in which uh, probably I don't know. Probably we should add some reflections precisely on the, the the moment in which the quantum network and the classical network have to uh, collaborate to produce a certain result apart from the uh, data that is derived from the quantum uh, um, uh, interactions is it's precisely about this that you have uh, uh, <clears throat> these uh, additional channels for for key distillation in qkd or you're using anything from, from error correction that is not purely quantum that you are uh, you are relying on, a, on an additional physical path that has to connect end to end uh, in, a, in a classical way. That was just wondering whether this would make sense to be included here in the, in the architecture because it's something that uh, is somehow like saying, well, the uh, quantum internet needs precisely some kind of a, of a classical substrate or, or, or a classical shadow or whatever you call it. Or twin. Um, so, just let me. Uh, I'll re I'll slowly reiterate your question and add a bit of mine to make sure uh, we're on the same page. Uh, so you're asking should, that should we reflect a bit more on the collaboration between quantum networks and classical networks? In the yes. Draft? Yeah, precisely because the, there are these uh, these uh, touch points in which you need a, a classical piece of uh, or, or a classical link. To support your, your quantum uh, uh, properties or your quantum communication. Yes. So the current draft already mentions that classical communication is going to be part of a quantum network. Um, it's definitely mentioned that as part of. Let me see what exactly it mentions so that I don't make stuff up. And Section five point five point uh, two. two. Classical so, communication. Yes. Yeah, communicate classical bits of information as part of distributed protocols such as entanglement, stopping, and teleportation. And two, communicate control information within a network, including both background protocols such as routing, etc. Okay. So I stand corrected, and I think that would be more than enough as, <laughs> as principles. Sorry, that's something I. I, I, I uh... Went too fast over, over the document. Sorry about that. But that's good. That's good. Uh, it's good to raise questions, but. Because it's always also a question, should we include more? I'm kind of on the stance that I think it's enough. But if somebody doesn't think it's enough, they can always raise the question either now or on the mailing list. No, if it, if it, I mean, my belief is that we're talking about the document on principle. This is, I mean, this is more than enough. Precisely. Okay. I wonder if at, at the architecture level, though, we do need to make the distinction between the the uh, the hard real time signals that are used to coordinate, for example, timing of photons versus the softer real-time signals that are used for acknowledgments and things like that. I'm not sure if we want to go into that detail in the, in the document or not. So I like that distinction because I think it's an important one. But I think, I don't know if we'd get ourselves into a trap of trying to define what hard real-time means versus soft real-time and where the boundary lies. Uh, it's, we're it, probably it, better it, off not going there. Yeah, I know. If you allow me, this is one of these kind of eternal discussions that you can find elsewhere in the ITF uh, and in many other places about what is real time or not, or what is uh, management and what is, uh, is uh, control and all the like. Yes. Better, better to, to uh, stay away from that. Okay, let's see. So, including the QA, I think we've now been running 22 minutes out of the allotted 20 minutes for this. Uh, 
topic. Any final questions? Anything urgent before we go back to, uh, before we move on to the uh, open floor? If not, Wojtek, thanks. Uh, thank you. Um, and so, we have until, I believe, until 50 minutes past the hour for this uh, session scheduled. So that's 25 minutes. Um, and as I understand it, the, the uh, Meet ecosystem will cut us off uh, sharp at, the, at the, uh, the official end of the time slot. Uh, yeah, well, uh, so I, I suggested some topics for the open floor. Uh, we can either first just open the floor and only then suggest topics or first suggest topics. How do you want to do it, Rod? Melchior says it won't cut off automatically, which is uh, uh, just happened oh. to a few meetings by accident. Okay, well, at any rate, we do want to end as close to on time as possible because everybody has more things to do. Good. Um, then the floor is open for discussion, and we have about 25 minutes or shade under. If anyone wants to ask either either new questions or return to uh, any of the three uh, papers or topics we've discussed so far. Jonathan Hamill, would uh, you're up. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So uh, I haven't been able to attend many of the cured sessions because of uh, conflicts with other working groups in the security area for past IETF. But so I'm not sure whether this has been discussed. I, I was wondering how the documents here. Um, integrate or, or how they relate to work that's being done in other standards groups, such as Etsy, uh, QKD, or um, in ISO? That's a really good question. Um, from what I have seen from what Etsy is working on, they, they are working at both the physical level and at the key management level. So the intermediate network protocols they have had, they have not yet worked on at all. Um, and also, as far as I'm aware, they're working on towards standardizing single photon QKD systems, and they're not doing anything related to repeaters and larger, more complex networks. Um, that's my understanding, although we have not directly coordinated with Etsy since the founding of QIRG. Um, however, ITU is also opening a, uh, a focus group on, on uh, quantum networking, and they have asked to coordinate with QIRG, and we are still negotiating um, that. Um, and there will be more to, more to come on that. And so if you're interested in particular in uh, you know, commenting on whether and how to uh, liaise with uh, ITU, I'm very open to that because I have no prior experience with ITU at all. Okay, Comment? great. Uh, yeah, um, so I haven't been involved in ITU other than um, I did attend their joint session when they held it with at, with ISO SC27, because in, um, in SC27 we're working on, uh, there's documents there that are on uh, security requirements for QKD devices. Uh, okay. And so there was a joint session um, that ITU had there where we're discussing relationships. And I think some of their documents, yeah, would definitely have uh, be related to work that's being done done here. OK, so sorry, that who, which group did you say that was? Sorry, the, I, the ITU, the F4G or whatever that is, um, mm -hmm. the focus group, the yeah. ITU focus group. So you are already involved with them? I am not. Sorry, I just attended a joint. Uh, they had joint sessions with various other standards groups, and yeah, um, you mentioned some I, ISOs standardization, but I don't know much about ISO terminology either. So that sort of went. In the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's many groups that are working on different areas. Um, 
but as for as you talked about the higher levels i think definitely the itu focus group would be of interest to keep uh track of there may be something like a joint meeting at some point with with uh, with itu we're still trying to figure out what level of coordination is appropriate but uh, anybody who has any comments on that i'm very open to it thank you um, there, uh, there's one question from the java from robin okay. Wilton. he's asking is, is the group looking at quantum crypt analysis at all or is that out of scope quantum crypt analysis yes as in as in using quantum computers to crypt analyze classical communications or in some other sense I'd like to give this back to Robin. And in that sense, yes, he says. Uh, we discussed that at one of the at one of the meetings when before we sort of kicked off QIRG, when we were you know, presenting at the open IRTF meeting and, and getting this off the ground, whether or not we wanted to include that in scope when we were uh, also putting out the very first draft of, of the uh, charter for the group. But I think we decided that's probably out of scope and that we want to focus primarily on the repeater networks in this group. Um, this is certainly a good forum for finding the, exp the finding expertise on, on that kind of topic, but I don't think it's particularly in focus for QIRG itself. If people think that it's important and, and think that it should be, we can certainly visit adding that into the charter and, and making something specific. But I don't want to make it, I don't want to make QIRG sort of too open-ended in that sense. Okay, Robin states, Ed Rod. Okay, thanks, fair enough. Um, another statement is from Ira McDonald. Missed round four post-quantum candidates were just announced last week. It's not a question, but I think it's important to know. Sorry, was that about the, uh, the, uh, the new US effort? Yeah, uh, I don't think it is. It's just it's post quantum candidate. I don't actually know what it is. It's just as NIST round three post quantum candidates. Maybe if Ira McDonald can share a link, I'd be a bit clearer. That's a good point you're raising. So whilst we wait for that, uh, the, there's a link that might be interesting in sharing. Uh, if I find it quickly, a link is coming. She says. And Jonathan Hamwell also shared a link to the Etsy group for the quantum. Excellent. And the, uh, sorry, I sort of zoned out for just a moment there while, while you were talking, so I, so I lost the thread on that mentally. Yes, and now Ira also shared the link. There we go, yes, I see. Um, I don't. I I personally don't follow post quantum cryptography particularly closely, but there may be somebody here who has uh, an additional comment on it. Um, I do think Nakayama. it's important. Shota Yakanama. Yes, Shota, wanted, Shota wanted to get into the queue here to uh, to, uh, to ask something. Yes. Um, does he want to talk, or should I read? Uh, I think Shata was willing to ask the question, but uh, yeah, he's yeah he was in the he was in the queue, but then he went away. There we go. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, can go you ahead. Hear me? Yes. Yeah. So about the use case document. So, so you know, some more and more algorithms should be discovered in the future, uh, by the future research. So um. What is important uh, in the use case document today? So, what will make it valuable for a long time? So, uh, some kind of uh, summarizing pattern of use cases uh, um, make it valuable. So, uh, there are some examples uh, in papers. So, in the paper, I pasted there in the archive paper. Uh, this summarizes uh, three patterns of usage. 
So um, uh, they are named Bell and um, Clifford group computation and uh, general, so non-Clifford group computation. So um, it's affect on uh, when we can use the uh, shared entanglement uh, is used. So uh, one have to wait until a uh, classical uh, power frame uh, is arrived to the destination. Uh, uh, someone uh, doesn't need to wait that. <clears throat> and also uh, the Dunbar's uh, link layer protocol paper uh, has a similar uh, summary uh, about the uh, pattern of use cases. So, so such summary would benefit, uh, would, uh, mm, would bear more benefit uh, in this document. So, Tom Gatton, do you have any uh, comments on, Shoto wants to know if they're, uh, if focusing more on patterns might actually improve the document. Uh, yes. sure. uh, okay. Yeah, th uh, Shoda, thank you for the uh, good question uh, and suggestion. Actually, uh, I, in general, I think it's a good, uh, it's a good comment. Um, in fact, in, in the current document, if you uh, look at the uh, section five, the three use cases we, um, we have been describing actually in a way to describe the interactions between different uh, ent uh, nodes or entities uh, not tie not not too much tie with a, sp a specific uh, algorithm for example when we describe the secure quantum computing and even the distributed quantum computing we only describe the um, user scenario there could be many different algorithms to achieve this distributed or secure quantum computing uh, I think probably the only, um, for the CoKD, the first use case, we mentioned a, a few um, CoKD algorithms. And probably your company is more related to that one. Uh, I, I think the reason uh, we give a few CoKD algorithm in first use case is based on the comments from the team. Uh, and also we think it's valuable because we describe the general secure communication setup, and then we say uh, there are some current exi existing algorithms we can use to achieve the secure communication setup. Um, so that's kind of the, I think we are in line with uh, each other. So what, whatever you, you just asked and commented, I think we already did for the secure communication and uh, distributed quantum computing. Um, but definitely, I will take a look at those two uh, papers uh, you point out and try to incorporate the some text or content um, in a way to describe more uh, pattern related or trying to figure out if we can improve the existing description or not. Yeah. Okay, thank good? you. All right, other comments or questions? Um, C.S. Perkins is in the jabber and he's stating, I missed the earlier discussion, but does post-quantum crypto work happening in CFRG? Maybe this is of interest for some of us. Yes, I think that's Colin, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. It's yes, Perkins. Yeah. At any rate, yes, Perkins. Yes. Uh, so uh, I asked if CFRG is meeting uh, this week, and Scott says no. They met two weeks ago. I missed that. Okay. I'd yeah, like to. I'd like to. I'd like to know about that work. Yeah, there's a there's a draft on uh, transition to post post quantum crypto in that group. Excellent. Uh, I can dig out the, the a link to it if, if that's useful. A link to it would be wonderful, but I but I but I could probably find it even if you don't. Um, other comments, questions. Dong Hee Sim had another comment regarding the ITUT works. There are two study groups, SG in ITUT working on QKD, 
in SG13, there are standardizing the network aspects of QKT, which means how, how to incorporate QKT into telecom networks. In SG17, the security aspects of QKD in the telecom networks are considered. Thanks. We should look into we should uh, look into to those documents uh, as carefully as we can and try to figure out which groups it makes sense to coordinate with most closely. Yes. And Colin shared another document in the data tracker as well as Ira. All right. Let's see. Uh, Jim Reed wants to chime in. Jim Reed. How do I switch on my mic? You are on. Cool. Excellent. Just a quick point. I too started up 13 is meeting at this very week and is due to finish its work plans of what it wants to submit to WTSA next year. So future work that the study group is going to undertake is they're going to present the plans to WTSA early next year and that will set out the plans for study group 13 for the next four years. So if anyone's interested in that and is an ITU member, they'd better take part in study group 13 soon. Thank you. Thanks. You know, you know what? So since we've got several things that have been mentioned here, it would actually be useful if we could summarize this on the mailing list, get, get a, a coordinated list of the other activities to make sure that we're coordinating with all of the right places. Um, you know, a lot of this should show up in the meetings of, of today's, um, the minutes of today's meeting, but uh, we should, covering it on, on the uh, mailing list would also be useful. Okay, one other point there is that interactions between ITUT, the telecom sector standard, and the ITF have a procedure in place for that, so it's better to follow that with exchange of liaison statements and engage the ITS IT liaison, Scott uh, Mansfield. Cheers. Yeah, Colin, Colin's been in the loop in the discussions we've had so far with about uh, about uh, ITU, so so we'll, we'll make sure that it's handled. Yeah, those, those discussions were about the IEEE rather than the ITU, but yes, I agree that if we're talking with the, IT, with the ITU, we also need to do it via the designated liaisons. I'll make sure you're looped in. Let's see, Jennifer wants to share video and or screen. I just misclicked, <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Wojtek, you've been kind of quiet for a little bit. I have nothing to add. Uh, if we're out of topics, uh, I did suggest a few on the mailing list, so we have like five minutes if somebody wants to mention them. So brief, quickly going to go over them. Uh, well, one is any new topics of interest that people would like to be covered. Uh, somebody already brought up inter-domain routing. But anything else that people would find it interesting to see kind of going forward, we are, after all, a research group that's meant to foster collaborations between physicists, uh, network experts, and just different research groups. Uh, and another suggestion is, uh, how do we deal and increase uh, activity from the experimental physicists and increase access to uh, hardware? Uh, so if anybody has anything to add on these points, uh, we've got five minutes. You're closely aligned? Yes. Go ahead. Is that someone? Um, one person we have not heard from today, I don't know if he has anything particular to say, one of the uh, authors of the uh, architecture document, uh, Bruno Reisman, do you have any, do you have any comments you want you want to add at this point? Uh, no, actually, I don't. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's simple. <laughs> All 
Anyone else want to comment either on on the uh, on any of the topics we've had so far today, or on uh, Wojtek's uh, proposed uh, question here? Uh, let me maybe expand on the question. Well, with the uh, principles draft soon complete, uh, that will basically the ideas that will should form, and the use case is kind of trailing very closely behind. That should form a kind of a solid foundation for continuing work forward. So I think it's if people don't have ideas now. Uh, which we should kind of like go forward and think like what should we continue doing? Uh, perhaps like lack of ideas maybe due to kind of bit of a low level of interaction between physicists, experimentalists, and network experts. So if you could find ways of increasing that, uh, so for example, I'm always happy to field any question uh, or put you in touch with somebody who actually understands a particular area of physics better. So if you're either on either side of physicists or networking people and just have any question uh, or want to get be put in touch with somebody who can answer your questions, uh, you should just post on the mailing list and uh, we should try and make that happen, uh, I think. Uh, I just, so I, I think we should, nobody should be afraid to ask questions which just because they think they're just too basic. Uh, whatever question you ask is going to be it's not going to be basic for some part, some group of the QIRG. So I'd really like to encourage uh, asking questions, just, especially if they might lead into some new uh, directions. Hello, hi, yes, Wojtek. No. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, could I have a, um, a quick comment? Uh, back in the first, uh, I think, the three meeting, uh, in the first meeting in, um, in, in Praga, there was a very nice uh, tutorial. So I was wondering, because we already passed like three or four meetings, I was wondering in the uh, future, maybe uh, this year or next year, have something similar to that tutorial. Um, you know, I, I, personally, at least for me, I think it's very helpful. Yeah. That tutorial, yeah. by the way, the whole two hours of it is up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So anybody who anybody who uh, missed that in Prague and wants to go look at it, it's available on the IETF channel on on uh, YouTube. But it it probably does make sense to to uh, to uh, revisit it once every couple of years as material changes or just to give people the opportunity to interact. We're slightly running out of time. We've got two minutes left. Uh, uh, I think, uh, do you want to say anything, Rodney, before we wrap up then? Uh, no, the, uh, the, one, the one thing that, that hasn't come up with was uh, the uh, U.S. Uh, quantum Internet effort. Um, I actually don't know a whole lot about it, but we, we all expected that the that, um, University of Chicago was going to get a big center from, from the uh, NSF. And so there's going to be a big U.S. Uh, effort coming down the pipe, and we'll do our best to get some of those people involved here as well, if they're not already. There may be somebody here already on the list who's involved in one way, shape, or form. Um, yeah. I did post a link in the chat at some point, if, so it should be somewhere there, to uh, basically a press announcement. Yep. So if anybody's looking We could talk that. about the, about uh, all, of, all of that uh, sort of indefinitely. <laughs> um, with that, I think we are done. Thank you all for, for coming. There's still 59 people here. We peaked at about 75 or 76, I think. Really thrilled that you all uh, stuck with us through, through this whole session. And more comments on the documents and more suggestions about where the group should be going are very welcome on the mailing list. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Looking forward to seeing you all either in Bangkok or virtually some way, some way shape, or form in November. Let's see. One. Uh, nope, just uh, thanks in, in the uh, Jabber. All right, all right I thanks. think we're done.
and thanks Jennifer for being JavaScript and thanks Robin for taking the minutes. Uh, we appreciate that. That Minix looked really good, by the way. Thank you all, and we'll see you. We'll see you online. Let's see now. How do I end this? I think people just leave. This is automatic. This set up automatically. All right. People are leaving rapidly. I'll stick around until most most of the people are gone. Got them. Is that Colin or Diego? No, no, I was just saying, making a bad joke about you behaving like a good captain. <laughs> in the last one. <laughs> Simply that. Okay, take care. Talk to you soon. Bye. Uh, bye. Looking forward to seeing you in person somewhere. Yeah, definitely. The people left on the list are clearly the people who are just AFK. They put it on for their name to be on the list. <laughs> just kidding. I'm sure like we had a good participation. So Wojtek, I'll send you and Colin both some mail about the ITU thing. I thought That's you were both point. seated in already, but but the uh, but. Uh, in fact, I thought the last round of email that, that went around was like, why why are Wojtek and, and, and Colin getting dropped from this? But maybe it was just that you hadn't been included in earlier. Uh, so actually, Colin made a good point. Uh, we had a contact from the IEEE, not the ITU, and we said the ITU. I checked my emails, and yeah, it's IEEE. <laughs> All right. So IEEE, ITU, and uh, Etsy, and uh, ISO are all doing something, right? It's all, so IT and Etsy are all QKD. Uh, I know that Etsy has like a bunch of docs about QKD APIs and interfaces. Yeah. Uh, but there's little to know that I know of, which doesn't say much, to be honest, uh, of anything beyond QKD. This US initiative is the first one that I've heard that goes beyond. So obviously, apart from what's happening in Japan and uh, Europe, uh, this US initiative is the first one, uh, another one that going beyond QKD, which is quite exciting. It's all good to see. Yep. Well, we're going to do our best to build a uh, test bed network over here, too. All right, we're down to about a dozen people here, but, but, uh, but I think most of them are probably uh, Grab Paying attention coffee. to other windows or whatnot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm off as well. Uh, All right. Cool. Thanks, Rodney, and <laughs> thanks, especially since it was like it's late night for you. Uh, <laughs> it's one a.m. <laughs> so enjoy the rest of your night. I'll see you around. All right. Good night. Bye.